braid season is upon us and let's get ready for a braid appointment because a lot of braiders today require you to come washed and blow dried but little do they know a lot of us don't know how to properly wash or thoroughly blow dry our hair because we didn't go to hair school <laughs> and a lot of the braiders didn't go to hair school either um i personally will still get my hair braided by somebody that's not licensed but nevertheless let's show you how to properly wash your hair i'm starting with my hair dry i don't think i had any um oil treatment or anything like that in there and i'm going in with this mazani clarifying shampoo you're going to want to clarify your hair before you get braids because i personally have never washed my braids before um and it is going to be a, sh a little bit of time without washing your hair so you just want to make sure that you thoroughly cleanse the whole hair shaft your scalp make sure you're rubbing that all in there um i'm running low on my mazani clarifying shampoo which is like exciting to me because i can't wait to try a new clarifying shampoo if you have any recommendations leave that in the comments um but yes the purpose of the clarifying shampoo is to remove any buildup that you may have from any oils or curl creams or styling treatments or anything like that you should use your clarifying shampoo i would say well i should say that i've been told that i personally need to use my clarifying shampoo every six weeks i think between four to six weeks is a safe zone if you have kinky curly hair like myself um making it a whole two months is a little bit of a stretch but you know it depends on your hair and your hair care needs always best to consult with a professional and you guys see i'm still massaging that shampoo through i actually really don't like recording in the shower but i like this view that i'm getting like you cannot tell me that 4 hair is not beautiful like watching the shampoo lather i very much enjoyed it anyway i'm gonna make sure that i rinse all of that shampoo out so that i can go in with my hydrating shampoo that i'm using and i'm actually using the shampoo from sacred which i really love so I believe this is my third time trying this sacred shampoo and seeing it on camera like the lather of this is just so I don't know it's just chef's kisses everything that I could ever need you see it's like clinging to like certain parts of my curls that I actually touched like and I did use too much I would say I used two quarters like a quarter like the coin and then like a little bit more and i don't need all that because i know a little bit goes a long way like the suds in my hands that kind of shows that i'm using excess um and i need to be more <laughs> um i need to conserve the product better but i love the shampoo i love the way it lathers and the way it smells i'm not sure if you guys are like scent people but it reminds me of like in the lalabo family the signature fragrance says that it is rich and complex temple oud has notes of oud australian sandalwood warm musk night blooming jasmine haitian vetiver and violet leaves i don't know how to describe it it's a light scent and sandalwood is one of the things that stands out the most to me just know if they come out with a body butter i'm buying it all right i'm still lathering my hair with that shampoo because i poured way too much um but my hair was just feeling really good and you know when you get in that like good shampoo um i should have had my tangle teaser with me in the shower but i forgot and at this point i'm gonna go ahead and rinse all of that shampoo out i usually rinse for about four three to four minutes i would say like a song length a song that's playing in the background um because at this point i really can't see anything it's all types of stuff in my eye but make sure you get a good rinse out of this shampoo because after this we're going to move on to the hair mask and i'm using sacred's hair mask that they have i really enjoy this product the texture reminds me of elmer's glue like it's like thick like that you very much have to work you have to work the products like through your hair it's going to take a little bit of some elbows 
but definitely worth it because my hair felt so soft after using this i felt the difference before well after i was blow, done blow drying and i let that sit with a conditioning cap on for about 15 minutes and then i make sure i thoroughly rinse that out i always use this hair towel wrap thing situation over my conditioning caps i did rinse my conditioner out already but i use that because i always need a little break it takes me about an hour to fully wash and blow dry my hair but that's just because i've done it so many times plan accordingly give yourself some time and be patient because no it's not going to be easy but you need to get like every strand these are the products i'm using to get my hair straight um i have this sacred hair sealing lotion this is just for a little bit of moisture um and i'm using like a really small amount i hope you can see that's it that's it for the um i would say that's like a quarter of my hair back there and then i make sure i massage that all the way through and i've been using this chi silk infusion for years um that little bottle really lasts me forever and then i massage that all the way through this is going to help you get your hair straight I also use this Fantasia Thermal Protectant. I don't know what took me so long to try this product, but when I tell you this leaves your hair with like a slight gloss after you're finished straightening, I'm usually okay with using my two different thermal heat protectants. And the reason why I do this is because obviously my hair is very tightly coiled and I would like to use as less heat and as less tension as possible. And they're both very lightweight, so as long as you don't put too much on it, then you should be fine. I'm showing you guys my blow dry brush. I love this. This is really one of like the top three products when it comes to straightening your hair at home um, because you don't have to apply as much tension and you can get to the back of your head easily because it's just like holding a hairbrush. I use mine on the low setting and as you can see, I'm not really moving the brush too much because the heat is working. You really have to exercise patience when it comes to doing your hair yourself. Um, you could go to the salon and get your hair burnt straight, which I have been also done, but they're doing a lot of like bad practices at those salons. They just don't care about your hair health and I'm here to help, okay? I do go over the hair multiple times because I don't want to just hold the heat there for no reason. And you see, that was after like 10 seconds and my hair is basically straight. I'm going to go back over the part that I missed because I was trying to do it like backwards. I'm going to try to move the camera, but I don't be trying to show y'all the messy parts of this room while I'm doing my hair and filming and braiding. I also did braid my hair myself. I'm sectioning off another part of my hair. I would like to consider this to be a small section and I can go right in and just start blow drying again because I already prepped this whole, I'm going to call it like a quarter of my hair. So I don't need to add any more heat protection or anything like that. And then I can just go in again, low tension, low heat and get to blow drying. I'm going to fast forward a little bit because I feel like y'all get the point. I always use my fingers to section off my hair because when, if I'm just blow drying, those parts don't need to be super clean and 4C hair is its most vulnerable while it's wet. And when I say vulnerable, I mean you're more likely to cause breakage with just overhandling your hair or like kind of like ripping the hair shaft. So you want to make sure you don't do that and be gentle with your hair while it's wet. I am prepping this hair section again with my sacred moisture sealing lotion and then with the chi and then with the Fantasia Thermal Protectant. Those are my three must go to steps. While I was massaging the products through my hair, I was feeling a couple of naps. Um, that's why they say our hair is nappy. So I did add the extra step of combing through it. My hair should be detangled already because I detangled before I washed it and I combed that hair mask through. But I find extra naps like towards like the center of my head. So I'm gonna make sure I go through that with the wide tooth comb. I do just comb the wet hair with the dry hair. Um, I'm not a professional y'all. 
I just, I don't know. I just always do that. But when I blow dry it again, I am going to get, make sure I get to my scalp. So I am just going to be doing the same thing over and over again. Remember, low heat, low tension, no excessive brushing or like finger combing or anything like that. And remember the processes with something that's going to give her moisture. Maybe it's like a, a hair serum. I'm using the sacred one and a heat protectant. I think you could be okay with one, but I do use two. I like to be thorough. Um, and just make sure you get your whole scalp, y'all, before you go in and get your hair braided. Because I know that'd be making the braiders real mad. I am going to leave this part in. I think you get the point. But if I did read a comment like years ago that someone just likes watching 4C hair being manipulated. Because a lot of us don't wear it out. So maybe you're here and you just like to see things being completed. Or you can just skip to the end if you want. <laughs> so much for watching i did clip my ends i kind of don't know if i want to show you guys how i did that because i'm not a hairstylist and i'm okay with cutting my hair but maybe you want to go to a professional um or i could just show you next time thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next one goodbye